Okay, so <clears throat> last week we touched on a whole lot of different dynamics when it came to this problem that we're facing in society of what I call neo-feminism. And I, I, I label it that to distinguish it from classical feminism, which is simply about uh, equal rights under natural law and um, women being respected as much as men in, in society, being treated as equals. I don't have any problem with that. I think both sexes should be treated with fairness and dignity and as equals as far as our rights are concerned, our rights under natural law. This does not mean that the sexes are the same, of course. And this is the, the, the part of the neo-feminist agenda is to androgenize the sexes, to masculinize women and to feminize men so that there is a blending and um, uh, 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 indistinguishable um, aspect when it comes to the sexes. That's what they want. They want androgyny. And what this does is it weakens the masculine instinct in men. And it makes them into what I call the inauthentic man. Okay, the corporate man. And then what it does is it also makes women more masculinized and more wed to the state. The idea of domination having to be present, okay? Having to have a part in our lives. G government, the acceptance of government. And <clears throat> you see this so prevalently in modern society when it comes to the fact that most women are still status. Now, that doesn't mean most men aren't, okay? Most men are still status as well. But I asked people as uh, an, introductor, an introduction to this topic, just think about the ratio difference in the so-called truth movement between men, truth seekers and truth tellers, okay, who are putting information out into the world and part of the alternative media versus how many women are involved in that. And it's not to say that there are no women involved in that process of doing that great work, but it's the, the ratio is so overwhelmingly imbalanced that I think anybody being honest with themselves can easily see that. And I think we should be asking ourselves the question, why is it that way? Continuing to get into the topic for tonight, we're talking about uh, neo-feminism as a epigenics operation, as a way of ultimately culling the human population by getting people to uh, war between the sexes. And we're seeing that already play out in our society, and it has been playing out in our society for decades since this agenda has been brought in by think tanks and Marxist and socialist movements. You know, um, we talked about that briefly last week, all the different institutions that are part of this, you know. A lot of this neo-feminism was ushered directly into our society by the Frankfurt School. Part of Gramsci's plan of the long march through the cultural institutions. People should look up Antonio Gramsci and understand incremental socialism, creeping socialism. You know, the, the total creeping incrementalist control of the state. Look up the Fabian Society. You know, that's another think tank organization that uh, is all about slowly bringing in the destruction of the authentic man and the authentic woman in our society so that the androgenized versions, the, the, the husks or shells of the former authentic man and authentic woman uh, can basically be cannon fodder for the state and are easy to manipulate and control at that point. The, all the other think tank involvements, you know, it goes up higher than even these organizations. These are like the political aspects of it, you know. You have like the Council on Foreign Relations and the Rockefeller Foundation, you know. Uh, again, aspects, political driven aspects of this here in the United States. And then you have things like the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, which is all about mind control and social engineering and eugenics. Those organizations grew out of Chatham and Wellington House in England. You know, and then of course you have the Club of Rome, which to me is probably one of the highest think tanks that's directly involved with this agenda because they are entirely about eugenics and population reduction. You know, and then you have to explore the connections between all of this and, you know, uh, organized religion. So it, it has very deep roots and it's ultimately all about control.
It's not about anything else. It never has been about anything else. It's about control and making the population more manageable through reducing its numbers. Another thing you have to understand is dark occultism plays into this directly. The neo, uh, I'm going to make a statement here and get as, folks get as offended about this statement as you want. The neo feminism agenda is derived directly out of satanic ideology, it comes out of Satanism. And one of the books that I highly recommend people to read when it comes to uh, understanding the direct manipulation of the male mind in society is The Satanic Witch by Anton LaVey. A very little known book, hardly anybody I know ever has ever read this book. And I think it's absolutely critical. It's a critical book to read to understand what's really going on in society. You know, this is a, a, a it's a guidebook, if you will. It's an instruction manual for the neo-feminist agenda as far as I'm concerned. You know, and, you know, look, here's all you really have to deeply grasp at first. The social engineers who have constructed this agenda want the vast majority of women, and again, I'm going to make generalizations when I talk about this, all right? I'm going to use terms like the vast majority of, and if you're uncomfortable with that, like I said last week, turn the show off now, okay? I'm not interested in whether people get offended by, um, you know, generalized statements. To understand this, you need to use generalizations. So I'm going to use most, almost all, almost every, the vast majority of, and if you're uncomfortable with that, tough. Okay? So um, the, the, the vast majority of women uh, are being manipulated by this agenda, by them being essentially told and buying into the idea that what life is really about, folks, is pleasure and comfort. And, you know, your daily pursuits, you know, the idea of the whole pursuit of happiness, very ambiguous terminology, okay? Rights are left at the door when it comes to this mentality, all right? It's about me, 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 all day, every day. I try to explain to people that if I could explain to you what Satanism really is, when, when you say the term, Everybody's mind goes to the idea of the Christian devil, you know, the red devil in, with the horns and the pitchfork and the tail, okay? This has little to zero to do with what I am calling Satanism, okay? Ideological Satanism, which, in which, and maybe this is a good time to explain this, because we're talking about the connection between the neo-feminist agenda and Satanism, Satanists chose the name Satan because of the archetypal um, connection to the Christian adversary or opposer. That which is the adversary or opposer, which is what Satan means in Hebrew, to the Christ consciousness, to the higher consciousness, the higher mind, the connection to the higher self. The, the real savior of the world, which is making that connection to higher self and higher consciousness and really being aware of what's going on within us and around us. Okay, Satanists chose that image because what they're trying to do is destroy that higher consciousness, keep people in a state of low vibratory consciousness so that they can be controlled and therefore ruled and put into slavery and bondage. You know, as such, they're the adversaries of that Christ consciousness. You know, they don't want that type of consciousness rising in our society. They want to keep it quelled. So that's the reason they chose that. However, the ideology of Satanism has nothing to do with the worship of the Christian devil, the concept of the Christian devil. It is about pure selfishness being the highest aspiration in life. If I could encapsulate what satanic ideology is in a nutshell it's waking up in the morning and from the minute you wake up until the time you go to sleep that night you aren't thinking about anything but yourself and what you could do to improve your own situation and you never ever think about anybody else's situation you never have any compassion for the suffering of other people 
in the world. You don't look at the world in a wider sense. You don't look at the injustices that are going on in the world in, the, in any kind of a wider sense. All you are doing is focused on me, 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 all day, every day. That is Satanism. That's what Satanism is, and I'm not asking you to believe or accept that that's what Satanism is. I'm telling you definitively and factually as a former priest of this religion that that is in fact what Satanism is. Period. The end. And it doesn't make a difference whether you accept it or believe it or not. You know? I, like, like I've said, if you want to know about any religion, you would probably want to go to the priest of that religion and ask them about it. Well... I was a former priest of Satanism, and I'm telling you, that's what the religion is. The period. Now, when you think about that, how many people in society qualify as Satanists? And out of those people, how many of them are women? And I, I admit, just about as many are probably men, but I'm telling you, this is heavily, heavily, heavily marketed and peddled to women in society. And there's a reason for that. To get the moral decay of a society going, you have to get the women's mind first. You absolutely have to get their minds first. Because largely, they're the people who are, quote-unquote, raising children. And I say, quote-unquote, because the, the parenting in our society is a joke. It's a joke. And women want to bear children, but they don't want to raise them properly. You know, because they weren't raised properly. And largely, neither were the men that they're associating with at all. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that just from my perspective. I talked about this last week. I wasn't raised properly by my parents. I wasn't raised by my parents, period. Like I said last week, my real family, the people who really truly raised me, are people I don't know personally in my life, in person. They were people who communicated through their writings and through other forms of media what real morality is about. And we have way too few quote-unquote parents doing that job. They're failing miserably at it. And that comes directly out of the mind control that most women undergo. Before the break, I was talking about how neo-feminism grew directly out of the satanic ideology and there's no better evidence of that than the book the satanic witch by anton levey which i highly recommend everybody reading to understand a lot of the manipulation tactics that are really being used against men and how men are really being uh, emasculated in this society uh, Controllers don't want any strong men in society because strong men are the only people who... Strong, informed, and enlightened men are the only ones who are really going to wage any kind of physical resistance against tyranny of tyrannical government in society. Now, it's not to say that women w would not be able to ideologically come out of their trance and understand the tyranny that's in place, you know, but when it comes to any kind of possible necessity for physical action, certainly men are going to be more likely than not the individuals who are going to be taking that action. That's why it's so important to get men completely emasculated in society. Um, and this whole idea of the destruction of all moral values in society starts with taking the woman's mind over. Okay, Because they're They've been in the traditional role throughout history as the nurturer and the one who is going to instill moral values into the child, okay, by teaching them, especially since traditionally women stayed with the child. Now, with women in the, the workforce, there's nobody except the state schools to basically instill so-called values into the child and what's getting instilled in those schools social darwinism you know um the the worship of money the worship of the state that's what's getting instilled into children scientism you know a, a total left-brained 
so-called education, which is a total indoctrination system of 50,000 hours of compulsory schooling with the child away from both parents. When you have parents who have not been raised with moral values, and the only thing that they've been taught to value is money. That's the value system, money. You know, where do you expect society to go? You expect it to become more free? You expect people to, to do great things in a free capacity? Expect it to go into chains, into chains, which, which is exactly where it's at. 